Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint and today we're going to be talking about planting um, a fruit tree and right here I've actually got a Eureka lemon tree which is one of the most popular store-bought lemons um, and I'd like to also give recognition to the Les Lisbon lemon which if you do some research in California is one of the most popular lemon varieties that you'll find in your store. Today we're going to be talking about actually feeding your trees and making sure you plant your trees organically and to actually understand why. Um, what I have here in front of me is the periodic table of elements um, and you can see you know H is for hydrogen, HE for helium, um, LI for lithium, BE for beryllium, um, B for boron, C for carbon which we know is the first element in making sugars, N is in nitrogen which is one of the most important elements for also making sure your trees grow strong and green, O um, for oxygen, F for fluoride and for neon. But the goal is this list goes on and on and on. And um, what we want to do, and you know, to take care of our trees is to make sure that we're putting in organic um, elements into our soils, which will help enrich the plant and actually give um, our produce a healthier um, fruit that we'll actually be bringing into our family. Um, again, I want to go back to where is your source of your elements coming from, and either it's going to be a chemical source or an organic source. And for me and my family, we choose to grow our food organically and to make sure that we're getting our nutrition from healthy sources rather than chemical factories. Um, what we're going to start with over here, and to save time, I've already um, started the hole where the tree is going to be going in. I'm going to move this tree from view. And before I ever start any garden project, I like to put on a pair of gloves. So I've got my gloves here and the reason for putting on your gloves is we're going to be dealing with soils that actually have manure um, which obviously contain a lot of bacteria including E. coli um, and furthermore when we add our organic products such as this which is citrus tone made by um, Espoma um, this product actually has added bacteria added fungus added a lot of um, microorganisms that can actually affect your health and so if you have any cuts or um, you know, any entryways on your hands, you wouldn't want this getting into your, into your body. So I've got my gloves on over here. Um, so this here is an organic source um, of fertilizer that we're going to be adding to our plants. Um, if we turn this around here, it says it's a 526. It goes 5-2-6. 5 is for the percentage of nitrogen in the product. 2 for the number, um, for the percentage of phosphorus, which is good for um, Good for fruit production and flowers, and then the last number is a six, which is important for healthy roots and um, and disease resistance. So we're going to be adding this as our choice of food for the citrus tree. Um, and then I just want to bring you aware that these two products look misleadingly similar, but this here, which is a star green product, um, again for citrus and avocado food, is actually a chemical source, um, whereas um, this product here comes from bone meal and feather meal and uh, you know all these organic sources this here was derived chemically um, still has nitrogen phosphorus and potassium which are the macronutrients necessary for plant health um, but again it comes from a chemical source so these elements will make its way into the plant and your food and ultimately be consumed by you and your family so if you choose to get your elements from a chemical source here's your chemical alternative um, and we're going to be growing organically um, so i prepared the, the hole here today I'm just gonna go a little deeper real quick. That's exactly what I wanted to show you. So here's our soil today. Excuse the helicopter that's flying overhead. Anyways, there's, I'm gonna end up having to cut this wherever. So let me just keep doing this until I find it. Um, so as you can see here, we actually found a worm that's here in the soil. Again, another reason for gardening organically is you wanna feed the worms and the nematodes and the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria that are in your soil. If you do this chemically, you're not gonna be benefiting the microorganisms that are in your soil. Um, so the first step that we're gonna do here is we're gonna add some organic fertilizer right to the base. We're then, so I added about a cup there. We're next gonna add some compost. And it doesn't necessarily need to be this brand, 
But this here is a Kellogg's Grow Molds 2-in-1 planting mix, also an organic source. And the last thing I'm adding is a cactus, palm, and citrus soil. And what it's in this particular product is it's got a lot of sand and it's got a lot of perlite, which helps bring the water from the surface soil all the way down to the deepest roots. So we're gonna add some of this product in the hole too. And if you zoom in, you can actually see all of those, um, those white um, particles in here. And, the, and then these white little flakes are actually the perlite, which help with drainage and to help bring the water from the surface soil down to the bottom of the roots. We're now gonna mix this all up. And the goal is you don't wanna put your trees right into this beautiful um, organic soil. You wanna mix it with your native soil so that the roots can work its way from the native soil into this beneficial composted enriched soil. Depth wise, you really don't wanna go much deeper than your pot. If you go too deep while this um, soil breaks down, um, it's gonna actually lower the height of your plant. And you wanna make sure you end up planting your plant at surface level, which I'll be demonstrating shortly. And the reason I'm mixing and then removing the soil is this is gonna help fill in the area around the plant. That's it. So we've got some nice soil right there. I'm gonna backfill it some more. I'm actually gonna compact it so it doesn't settle. And I'm not pressing too hard, but I'm trying to make sure it's got a firm area. I'm actually gonna set the plant here real quick as a test. But again, the goal is to make sure that the surface of your pot is at the same level as the surface of your ground level. Um, if anything, err on being about a quarter inch to half an inch a little higher as this plant will settle as the composted material below it um, get consumed by the microorganisms. The next thing we do before we stick the plants in the ground is I'm going to remove these ties. As we discussed in another video, you can see that this plant is grafted. If you want to zoom in over here, you can see that it's grafted to um, what's most likely a, um, a sour orange rootstock, which actually gives it the vigor. And then um, we're planting Eureka lemon tree, which is um, popular for um, giving new roots, I mean new shoots that are actually purplish in color. So if you've got a tree from the nursery and it's not given this characteristic like purple new growth, it's probably not a Eureka lemon, um, which has happened before. So the next thing we're gonna do is remove the ties, remove this tie, plant to breathe for a second before we restake it um, with our own stake and we're gonna make sure it's bound loosely and not so tightly. We're now gonna remove the pot. We're gonna look at the base of the tree to make sure that there isn't any um, coiled roots, which this seems to have only been in a pot for a short period of time. If it was in a pot for more than a year, it would have been root bound, meaning the roots would have been coiled at the bottom. We may need to have pruned it to shape it. We're now gonna set this tree in the ground. And now we're gonna use this nice topsoil mixed with native as backfill around the tree. Now we're just gonna basically use the remaining soil. There's an excess of soil because of all of the compost that we've added to the soil. And we're just basically gonna make a ring um, to help retain the water that we're gonna then use to water around the tree. I'm now gonna step around the root ball to remove any air pockets. I'm not pressing too hard, but just enough to remove the air pockets. And I'm not stepping necessarily all the way around. I'm just trying to compress the soil around it. As you can see, this here is the original level that we're gonna to try to maintain. So we gotta back, remove all of that.
and we're actually up on a hillside. So in regards to drainage, this is an excellent spot. We're at the top of the hill and the water's gonna work its way down. I'm now gonna add a little more organic fertilizer on the tree, about another cup. Add a little bit more of this sand mixture with perlite. We're gonna put that around the soil, mix it a little bit in with the native soil. And we can now remove the stick. And backfill that hole in. The next step we're gonna do is actually um, put some Ivor Organics three-in-one tree guard paint, which is basically a product that's uh, made derived from organic paint. Unlike the other paints in your store, which may have cancer-causing chemicals, it also has um, it also has algicides and fungicides. And algae are plants. And this here is a plant. So if you're putting a product that actually kills algae to help preserve wood, you're probably harming your plants too. So this here is an organic three-in-one tree guard paint. It also has neem oil and castor oil. And neem, as we know, has been used by farmers, especially in India, for thousands of years to help keep insects off of your plants. Um, it basically keeps insects from actually boring. What I'm doing is protecting the wood from any boring insects. There's a lot of um, areas that have been pruned. I wanna make sure insects stay out of it and, and not make their way into the tree. And then it also has castor oil, which helps make it taste bad to rodents um, that may decide to chew on it, as we do have a lot of moles and voles and gophers um, here in Los Angeles. So the next thing we're gonna do is that, but before I apply this product, I'm noticing that there's a shoot over here on the side. And unless we were gonna to wanna to create a more bushy compact tree, um, I would keep it. But because I want this tree to actually grow over my head and actually be you know, in the tree form, I'm actually gonna remove it. And actually by removing it, this tree actually even needs more help from sunburn. As you can see, there's quite a bit of light on this tree. And that's what the side of your organics is gonna do. Um, citrus trees as well as avocado trees, a lot of thin bark trees are very susceptible to sunburn. And until this tree actually forms a canopy that'll shade the lower part of the tree, we're gonna add the cyber organics. So we're gonna open the can here. I had this um, pre-mix, but it usually it would come as a powder. Um, the organic paint comes in a powder and then you'll have your oil bottle that you'll mix together with water. But I had this pre-mix right before um, preparing this video. We're just gonna mix that and then brush it on. And that's it. Um, as you can see, this product goes a long ways. The last step we're gonna do here is we're gonna um, spray the top of the tree with the Ivory Organics paint, which I'm gonna um, get my spray bottle. And we're gonna continue with that in just a second, so hold on. So our next step is we're gonna um, is basically add one to two teaspoons um, to this container. The manufacturer says you can put one to two teaspoons per gallon. Um, I'm putting a little bit more because this is gonna be the one and only time I'm doing it. Um, but the manufacturer says you can do this up to two times a year where you use the product as a foliar spray. Um, obviously be sure to test it on your plants, but I've used it on my citrus trees um, and it's worked quite remarkably. And I'm just gonna spray it here. Now I've actually just made an organic sunblock um, for the plant as well. So it won't go into any shock um, or dry out as it gets established. And if you zoom in, you can actually see a little bit of the white um, paint that's actually on the leaves. And the best part about it is again, it's organic. So it doesn't have all the chemicals that an organic paint would have. And it's still providing the sunblock protection to keep this plant nice and cool throughout the summer. Um, the last step I'm gonna do is basically water this plant thoroughly. I'm gonna add a vitamin B1 solution as well to help with transplant shock. Um, but that's pretty much it. The installation of a Eureka lemon tree um, here in Los Angeles, California. If you like this video, please be sure to like it. And most importantly, subscribe so you can keep up with all of our YouTube channel um, information that we have um, to offer you. Thank you and have a wonderful time planting. Take care. Bye. So as you can see here, um, the roots are actually starting to show over here. Um, I just want to show that the roots should be right near the ground level. It's better always to plant it a little higher than lower. So we'll just add a little more compost and we should be just fine over here. So that'll be covered. If it's exposed, just keep on adding a little more compost, bring the berm up a little bit higher. Um, as you can see, we can go as, 
about this high and the goal is to actually keep it in a mound that's above the ground level um, to prevent the plant from getting any root rot which is um, a disease that actually kills a lot of citrus trees. Then the final last step is we remove the stake um, that we got from the nursery and now we're going to add our own stake. So here I've got a metal a metal pole that's actually cover, covered in um, vinyl plastic. Um, you can get these from most of your local hardware stores and I'm just pushing that into the ground. And the goal is basically to keep the plant sturdy and not blown over um, on a windy day. And until this plant actually gets established and the tree trunk gets a little thicker, um, this pole is going to have to stay here and support it, which will probably take a good two to four years um, to accomplish. And you'll notice when I put on the tie onto the stake, I'm actually tying the stake and not the tree. I'm putting on the tie as tight as I can over here, and then I just wrap around the tree. You don't want to actually strangle the tree by putting a knot on it. Um, There's far too many trees I've seen that have actually, um, their health has been compromised because it's actually um, tied at the tree and not on the stake. So we're gonna tie the stake and then any excess string we cut off so it presents nice. And that's it, we're done, our Eureka lemon tree. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like it. And most importantly, subscribe to follow all of our YouTube channels and all of the um, informative videos we have to share. Take care, have a great day, happy planting.